All right. Hey, folks. So today's topic is called You're Never Going to Change. You, right, watching this right now, you're never going to change. You're never going to hit your goals. You're going to fail. And we'll do this whole dance again in six months when you come back. Today, I want to talk about how to actually ingrain habits into your lifestyle and keep them sustainable and actually succeed. So the title is designed to be a little bit inflammatory and I wanted to grab your attention with that because a lot of people run this like this cycle over and over again. They try, they fail, they become guilty, they try again. And they never really reach their goals because it's more about there's a fault in the process. And I want to discuss that today. So if we just crack on and have a look at the first slide here. So this phrase was commonly attributed to Einstein. And whether he said it or not is, is irrelevant, but the phrase is insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Now, if you think about this, what do most people do when they restart their training or their diet? Let's say they've gone off the training routine, gone off the diet, they feel like crap. And you were getting a lot of this, obviously, during the last few years when gym access was was shut down. People get back on top of things. They've had a horrific couple of years. Diet's been all off, and they're, they're looking to get back on top of things. So their idea is they're going to do the same thing again. The diet last time failed because this got in the way, or that got in the way, or whatever else got in the way. So the plan is I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Just this time, I'm going to do it better. So internally, they think if they just do the thing again, the same method as previously, it, everything will work. So I know people who um, regularly pass, uh, practice fasting, and they fast all the time, 16, 8, um, 24, ADF, all the different types of fasting protocols. I've mentioned before on another fasting video, I ran into one guy on Reddit who combined alternate day fasting with OMAD. So basically he ate three meals per week and he said he had reached a plateau. So clearly those three meals were either very large or he something just wasn't working. So every time he falls off and people like that, they just think I just need to do the plan again and then just need to tweak the plan again. But the plan worked, I didn't work. Something about it was wrong. Now to the outsider looking in, it just looks like they're repeating the same behaviors that led them to fail in the first place. You can look at it two different ways. So you can look at it and say, all right, well, the plan that I had was great. Intermittent fasting, keto, training every day, special diets, whatever it is, whatever it is, right? The training was great. It's just that I did it wrong. To the outside observer, they're looking at this cycle repeat itself for the past year, 10 years, in some cases, 20 years. And I do know people like that. And so for them, they just think, well, this is crazy. You're just repeating all the same behaviors that led you to the end result. It's like a gambler, a gambler who is addicted to gambling and in the end just ends up losing all his money. He thinks next time it's going to be better. I've got it this time. I've cracked the formula. And so they do the same thing again. They lose a bunch of money. The horse doesn't, has an injury, whatever it is. It's always something. But the point is, they put it down to something that they did or something wrong with the details of what they did. Whereas if you were to look at this gambler from the outside, you'd think to yourself, well, yeah, they're failing because, and they're losing money because they're gambling. Like it's, doesn't really work out for most people. And there's a reason for that. The house always wins. So it's the entire process is wrong and doomed to fail from the start. So whatever they're starting, it's leading them towards the failure and they're not recognizing that. But that's what most people do. I think most people have started a fat loss endeavor and have failed at some point, but have got it in their heads that actually there was some detail that I did which didn't quite work out, but this time I'm going to crack it. And rather than trying something completely new, they just go and want to do that same thing over and over again. I'd like to hear from you guys. This is probably going to be quite a long video, but I would like to hear from you guys in the comments if some of this is starting to ring a bell 
Or even if you think, no, Faz, you're wrong. And actually, I did start a diet last time. It did fail, but this time I'm going to nail it. I'd like to hear from you as well. Next slide. Where people typically fail. Typically, it's with unsustainable plans. Now, this is starting to move into the discussion about habits and sustainable habits and how to make habits actually stick. So most people fail because their plans are unsustainable. So most people will do nothing for months, then there's a flurry of activity, and then they burn out. And that's typically where people land. Now, that could be any number of things. It could be a training program which leads them to try and break out of the intermediate stage. You know, they and I've spoken about this before. They just have unrealistic expectations. They don't realize that the rate of weight uh, strength increases are very slow when you're an intermediate. So the plan fails. Um, they they end up gaining a rep or two a week, and they're like, "Ah, oh, this is too much. I can't do this." So, or it's a fat loss endeavor, and inevitably the fat loss diet is unsustainable. It's not working for them. They fall off the diet, they eat a bunch. And you can tell who these people are all the time. You know you, you know who they are. They're always on a diet. Or like with the intermediate trainer, he's always changing routines, always looking for that one secret set and rep scheme. Like, ah, Faz, he's a wizard, that's the one. When that's burnt out, it's some other YouTuber or some other YouTuber or some other YouTuber. And everyone's out there selling their plans. So fair play, you know, fair play to the hustle, I guess. But I, I'm here to tell you that Oftentimes, it's the approach which is wrong right from the off. And as I've said previously about training routines, it's probably not your training routine which is off. It's probably everything else you're doing, your expectations normally. And that's where people fail. So a couple of examples here. It's the classic overtrainer. This guy hasn't ran for months, so he's a runner. Then one day he wakes up, he weighs himself, he looks down, sees his belly, and he can't see past his belly. You guys know what I'm talking about. So he decides to run every day for the next week, fractures his foot by Friday, and the cycle repeats itself. He's stuck at home now for another three months. And it happens if like Bulgarians for <laughs> the next few months. Um, I even remember a Chris Duffin video where he said, I deadlifted every day for nine days, and now I'm injured. And I remember thinking to myself, yeah, <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? So... <laughs> A ton of people got injured on that squat program. Anyway, so where people typically fail is they'll do nothing for ages, then they'll have a burst of unsustainable activity, right? Just keep that in mind. Next, so how do we actually make habits work? Okay, to actually make habits work, we need consistency. Now, uh, me personally, I would rather do something, I would rather somebody, a client of mine, do something little every day which is of mild benefit, rather than try and stick to something really extreme, which they can only really maintain for a short period of time. This is for you know long-term sustainable things. It pays to be consistent. One of the reasons that I'm currently training um, six days a week is because I do a little bit every day. And for me, that fits into my lifestyle a lot better than trying to smash three or four really long, heavy gym sessions over the course of the week. Those pulsations, they're not as good for me, just my personality. That might not be you, I understand, but I'm trying to explain to you, it's more about the bigger picture here. It's more about what you feel works for you and what you can do, which offers minimal impact, but offers a good degree of benefit. So you're looking for the balance between impact and benefit. It's always a lot better to try and include one little thing you can do. Like oftentimes when I'm working with lifestyle clients, I will talk about restriction less than I will talk about what they should eat. Because if somebody comes to me, let's say Karen from Accounts decides to join up with me and she wants to drop 40 pounds. God bless her. She's got that to lose, right? I'm not going to go on this massive campaign to say, look, you need to not eat X, Y, and Z. You need to not you need to track calories, all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to simply start with saying things like, why don't we try eating a bit more protein? Why don't we try eating a bit more vegetables? Because that will have the knock-on effect of killing her appetite, which means she'll just naturally eat less of the other stuff. And that'll probably be good for the first 10 or 20 pounds. So 
those are small things that she can do on a daily basis, which can improve her life and get her towards her goals and build some confidence, build some efficacy. This is what I do with all my lifestyle clients. We start off making small, positive additions, not subtractions, additions. We get the ball rolling. As you build efficacy, you can introduce more habits, but and they're hungry for more, but they need to see that success first. So to make habits work, consistency tends to be the key. And to make consistency work, everybody has a threshold for what they can do with minimal stress, minimal fuss. Try and hit that threshold first. And if, for you, that is simply just, I'm going to eat more protein. For, for a lot of people, a simple thing is, for lifestyle clients, simple thing is having breakfast, um, having protein at breakfast. A lot of people don't do that. Like I've worked with plenty of lifestyle clients whose breakfast will be a coffee, a pastry, and good intentions. Like That's it. And so clearly, you know, they're starving by 10 o'clock and people are passing around pastries at work, cakes, so they indulge. Come lunchtime, they've had, they've already had 800 calories, zero protein, they're starving. And the cycle plays on, so it's very, very common. So to make habits work, we need consistency, something which is going to be small, which we can do on a regular basis. Next. So some examples of this. Now, like I know from, from my business, an example for my business is YouTube is a very regular thing for me. YouTube, my check-ins, and my social media work. Like every Friday, I'll send out a podcast. Before uh, before that, I'll, I'll usually also do an email as well on my email mailing list, which you can um, get access to on my website. Um, I'll always do my check-ins in the morning. YouTube will be done usually three or four times a week. And the rest of the time, I'm working on ideas for YouTube and scripts like this. So for me, business is a very serious sort of daily endeavor. I have a list of things that I need to do, and those are now ingrained. Like I couldn't imagine waking up and not going straight to my client check-ins. I couldn't imagine doing that. I couldn't imagine not doing YouTube. I couldn't imagine not doing a bunch of this other stuff. Like these are all definite for me. With regards to diet and training and steps, those are all things which I've slowly improved over time. So I've added these things in and they've come in a bit at a time. So one thing that I do really work on with my clients is separating the habits from the outcomes. And this goes into where you place your focus. So you'll notice that so far, all I've discussed is habits. I've not actually discussed outcomes. So for example, somebody will come to me and say, look, Faz, I want to drop 40 pounds. And I think it's good to have a goal because the goal will help to motivate you. And it also, for me, it helps to program realistic expectations. So I can say, okay, we can lose this amount of weight per week. It'll take roughly this long with some contingency. Okay, so it, play, it plays into the expectations. However, after that point, we're mostly talking about habits and processes. So more than outcomes. I don't have a great deal of control over the outcome. Like, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. It might be a diet specific sort of diet plan that I've imposed, some type of training routine, some type of steps. If you can do those three and you can do them right, then you will likely receive the outcome that you want. That is the journey. And actually being in love with the habits and emphasizing the habits is way more important than the outcome. So another, another some simple ones are things like weighing yourself in the mornings. So I've had these discussions with clients previously and just weighing yourself in the morning for some people can be revolutionary. It can just give them so much positive or negative feedback that it helps to it helps to structure their mindset for the day. Weighing yourself first thing in the morning so you know what your weight is doing relative to the week and relative to what you ate last week or the, the previous day. It gives you a lot of feedback and it really fuels what you're going to do on that day. And I find it's very powerful. And occasionally, I mean, when people first start working with me, even with regular clients, like lifestyle clients, I might get them to track and weigh their food every week, every day for like one or two weeks. Now, a lot of times, what that does is it provides a light over what they're doing. So they're aware all of a sudden. And because they're aware, they are now choosing better foods. And that's a really interesting twist. I find in the first couple of weeks, if I ask somebody to do that, oftentimes they'll, they'll lose weight almost immediately. Every now and again, you get somebody who doesn't, and that's usually 
more deep-seated problems. But um, generally, if you make people aware of what they're eating, without a doubt, they start to drop weight. Because now, they're actually scrutinizing what they're doing on a daily basis. So weighing them, it's not for me but more than it is for them to say, hey, this is what you're doing. For some people, they don't like to weigh that often. I've had other things work as well. So I've had one guy really didn't want to track his calories, which is fine. But he did want to be very, very accountable. So I got him to send him send me pictures of his food every single day. So he would send me pictures of his food Monday to Friday. And then Saturday, all of a sudden, there'd be something would come up. Like, uh, Faz, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going out fishing. I, I don't have signal. I can't... Uh, can't send you pictures. I'm at a friend's wedding. I can't. Uh, and Monday morning, the weight just spiked up. So I'm like, hmm. Clearly, he's he just wants to look away on those days. He just wants, doesn't want to deal with it. And this is often when people put on those 20 pounds. They like, oh, I just gained 20 pounds overnight. Like, you didn't gain 20 pounds overnight. You gained 20 pounds because you weren't aware. You weren't putting checks on yourself. Some example habits. Yeah, weighing yourself in the morning every morning, as we just mentioned. Another thing is taking a long walk every lunch break. It goes towards your daily step goal and it gets you out of the office, usually where people have snacks. Now, similar to what I've said in the last slide, both these habits are signals. They're signals. The habits themselves are irrelevant. Like, I'm not even going to be that concerned about the daily weigh-in. I'm going to be concerned about the weekly average, but the act of weighing yourself in the morning gives you a lot of feedback. Like I have one client right now, he's actually trying to gain weight, trying to gain weight, and he's struggling with gaining weight. He hates to weigh himself. He's very inconsistent. He'll weigh himself maybe once or twice a week. He avoids it on purpose because he knows he needs to gain weight so that he can improve his bodybuilding. But he's he's not doing that very much. And the weeks where his diet's a lot better, he tends to weigh himself more, the weeks where the diet isn't so good and he loses weight, he tends to weigh himself less. If I don't see a weigh-in for a couple of weeks, I know he's lost weight, and he has. So, But the thing about signaling, like doing things like weighing yourself in the morning, every morning, or taking a long walk at lunch break, they signal to you, you as the client, you as the individual, that you are now that person who goes for walks on their lunch break. You become, it makes you very cognizant of your behavior. And that's important because you have to be understanding of, okay, that's me now. It's kind of like sometimes the largest changes you see are where someone, somebody gets a health scare. So the doctor says, look, you're six months away from a heart attack or whatever. And they're just like, oh, they'll drop 50 pounds, 100 pounds overnight, or like really quickly, not overnight, but really quickly. Now, why is that? Well, because it's in the back of the head. They're aware. You see what I'm saying? Like these habits make you aware of your day, make you aware of what you're doing. Now, a guy like that, who's said, look, you're going to die if you carry on like this, he's intimately aware of what's going on, and he will lose weight until he's out of the danger zone every time. Now, we don't want you guys to go through anything like that, so what you should be doing is putting these things into place and, and facing the truth. So I think weighing yourself is very important, um, but it's just one habit. Don't get hung up on that. I've, I've talked about it a lot. But it's just one habit. As I say, another habit could be taking a walk every lunch break, drinking a lot of water. These are all things that may or should just make you aware. Like I am now that guy who does walks, who, who drinks a lot of water, who eats vegetables with every meal. I am that guy now who who eats 500, veg, 500 grams of vegetables with every meal or who has a, a large piece of protein with every meal. I am that guy now. And over time, my body will change to morph into what that guy looks like. Does that make sense? The other thing is, which usually comes after I've made that point is, well, it's easy for you. And you can say it's easy for me. You can say it's easy for whoever else. But um, I guess the message here is, what made Dorian Yates Dorian Yates was a series of excellent habits. Like I heard a story once that they, um, he was signing autographs for the Mr. Olympia. And he just sort of disappeared at about 12 o'clock. And he was getting paid to do it. So they, they finally tracked him down. He was in a small room eating lunch. And they were like, what are you doing? You, we've paid you to be here. We've paid you good money. We've flown you over. He's like, no, no, you don't understand. I need to eat this meal because I am not going to miss a meal or a training session or a cardio session 
every week for 20 weeks because in 20 weeks, I am going to win the Mr. Olympia. And they were like, whoa. So that's a guy who over time has implemented habits one by one. Now, do you think Dorian was like that from day one? I doubt it. You know, I doubt it. What makes me, me? I mean, recently, you guys, if you were following me on Instagram, you've seen that I've been posting my training and my diet it's because I'm making a good run or for um, just just a good run to improve my physique. And I've been posting everything. It's been interesting, the feedback that I've been getting. You know, one guy commented, why don't you post your, why don't you post some, um, some bad foods or something like that so we know you're human? And I guess it's a tough one to answer because right now I have like one free meal every week on a Saturday night and I do post that. But the rest of the time I do eat exactly how I post on social media. And as a result, my body is changing quite rapidly because I'm on it all the time. Now, I'm not saying I, I do that all year. I don't. But for right now, that is what I do. So you are the net result of your habits. So if you want to be leaner and fitter, and I, that's what I want to be a little bit leaner, I want to be a little bit fitter, then I'm adjusting my habits accordingly. But also bear in mind, I've had seven years of dieting practice at this stage. I've competed, I've been on stage, I've taken it to the pinnacle of physique. I've had 22 years of lifting experience. So I'm well versed in adding small habits over the years. And I essentially do this now for a living. So it shouldn't be a surprise that I have a lot of those habits in place. But the point is for you guys, you can all do that. It's just the habits have to be implemented slowly over time. Like it's taken me 22 years. It's taken Dorian years, even with Dorian's personality. But the point is you add small, sustainable habits over time and they build over time. You don't add everything in all at once. The next thing is, and it's related to that guy's comment, we need to normalize guilt. And I kind of think that's what the guy was driving at. And by the way, if you are watching this video, because you know who you are, drop a, drop a message in the comments and just let me and just let me see who you are and just sort of discuss how you feel about this video. But I do think it's important to normalize guilt because we all falter. I, I am very uh, understanding of what he was trying to see from me. Like he wants to see a human side of me, and I get that. I, I think I replied back to him, like, this is, this is pretty much it. And it was, and it is. But we do all falter. We do all feel guilty. Like, just right now, I'm having a good run because I'm doing, like, a, a run. So... But I would be very aware of people who don't discuss or mention their failures. Like, I'm not just talking about past failures. Like, oh, I used to be fat and now I'm this. And I eat like this all the time. It's like, we all fail, okay? We all falter. We all have books that go wrong. We all get cravings for food. Um, no one's a machine. Like, I get cravings. I get tired. I get hungry. Sometimes there'll be days where I want to skip the gym. I just want to sit on the couch like I'm getting old guys <laughs> so or just not eat that meal you know there are there are times when this is happens and I think we need to normalize that because there is a very real danger that if we don't normalize that we get guilt we get guilt for feeling those things ourselves and I'll say this part of what makes some bodybuilders very good to work with is most bodybuilders that I know cheat on their diet a lot more than regular people right your regular guy who works for you know, an IT firm and has two kids, hardly ever cheats on his diet. He doesn't have time. Most bodybuilders I know cheat on the diet way more. Now, the good thing about them is they're used to just getting back on. So they just hop back on the routine, the lifestyle, to get back on the next meal, to get back on the gym routine. They don't feel guilty about it. They just like, have a laugh about it and move on. So I think we need to normalize guilt around faltering because it happens. Now, the reason for that is failure, so this faltering failure, it's only failure if you don't recover. So my golden rule for clients is for diet, get back on track the next meal. Don't have any guilt and equally don't punish yourself because it happens. And I think this is part of my sort of thing on the last slide about how I'd be very cautious about celebrities or internet people, YouTubers, who don't discuss their frailties. We're all, we all falter. We all have bad days. We all do. Not only is that normal, 
but we should forgive ourselves. And we shouldn't look at other people and look at their Instagram as this sort of highlight reel to say that's what we should aspire to and that person never fails or falters. More than likely, the more perfect somebody tries to make their diet and training and lifestyle in general on Instagram, probably the worse it is, especially if you don't see their physique changing. And if they're overweight, then, and they're posting all these perfect meals, and well, something's amiss, isn't it, clearly? So, but the point here is, if you do fail, and you will, you're only going to stay the same and actually completely fail if you don't recover. So recover from it. So just to kind of end this, um, we have to try and break out of this cycle of mediocrity. So that is, we start with the unsustainable activity, okay? Whatever that is, whether it's training, whether it's diet. I mean, even if it's relationships and something's going wrong, like a, a particular type of behavior you're doing is just continuously annoying your partner and you just keep doing it over and over again. Let's say you don't do the dishes, you don't take out the trash, whatever it is, okay? That unsustainable activity is always going to lead to failure. Then it's going to lead to guilt and then divorce from the activity. In this case, that could mean a divorce from your diet, from your training, and just, again, back to the same thing. Just that is how you stay mediocre. That is how you never make gains. All the highest performers that you see, they all avoided this trap. Your Usain Bolts, okay, your Michael Jordans, they were all implementing small little wins, not unsustainable plans. That is the key to making a long-term change, is to going from where you are now to where you want to be. Yeah, so hopefully that has sort of rung a bell and has been a bit of a wake-up call for some people because um, you don't need a mega big all bells, all whistles plan. You need some sustainable habits, some small changes you can make, which can provide some direction and provide some benefit, and then build those in, ingrain those, and work on the next one. Like extreme results normally require time because for extreme results, you have to implement a bunch of different additions at once. And uh, you just need time. You need time. So. I would just urge you guys to focus, if you are looking at long scale changes, if you're trying to get out this intermediate zone, if you're trying to drop that final 20 pounds of body fat, don't just attempt the same method that has failed you time and time again. Don't keep into that cycle. Step back for a second and realize those steps led you to failure in the first place. You need to find something new. And that usually responds to so that usually means something which is a bit more sustainable and then build on that over time. Right, folks, I'm going to call it there. I will speak to you in the next one.